more on this, we're joined by former Foreign Affairs Minister John Manley. Mr. Manley, thank you so much for being here. Pleasure. First off, 41 Canadian diplomats will have their diplomatic immunity revoked by India. How much of a blow is this to Canada-India relations at this moment? <laughs> Mike, it's not good news. Um, and, of course, these are generally people who are uh, servicing the very large flow of people traffic between Canada and India, frequently dealing with applications for uh, visitors' visas or sometimes immigration visas from India to Canada. Uh, often those visas have to do with uh, pursuing university education at our institutions. So that will definitely impede the ability of Canada to facilitate the entry of Canadian na of Indian nationals to Canada, which has been uh, important to us over the years and very important to especially our universities. Yeah, Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie says that Canada is not reciprocating. Do you think that's a mistake? No, I think we're trying to turn the temperature down a little bit here. Uh, I think uh, the Indian uh, reaction to the Prime Minister's announcement has been, um, has been uncharacteristically harsh uh, given the circumstances. And I think that uh, uh, Minister Jolie is quite wisely trying to just lower the temperature mm -hmm. uh, so that hopefully uh, things uh, can return to something more like a calm and we can begin having uh, the really pragmatic, practical discussions around what happened out there in British Columbia last year and, and, and what should be done about it. Yeah, it's interesting because you spoke about the reaction from India and Minister Jolie says that the Prime Minister, before he rose in the House of Commons, that Indian officials were made aware of those credible allegations that India may have been involved in the assassination of Hardeep Singh Nijar, that Canadian uh, national who was on domestic soil. Can you explain why India doesn't seem to want to be collaborating on this file right now? Well, I, I think they... Uh I mean, there's, this is a product of tension that's been there for uh, quite a long time. Um, it, you know that, that the Indo-Canadian population is disproportionately Sikh compared to India's own population, and that many of these um, tensions that have arisen with respect to separatism in India have had their roots in, uh, in the Sikh community in parts of Canada. And India, for many years, has been complaining that Canada just wasn't tough enough dealing with uh, some of the extremist elements in that. We have had our own experience. After all, the Air India disaster that occurred back in the 1980s originated in Canada and with pretty reliable evidence that that was caused by uh, Sikh extremists in British Columbia. So India's had that point of view uh, for, for a long period of time. Why they don't want to face uh, what these accusations may be uh, is something that, that only they could really comment on. But I think they probably feel like there's been a bit of a loss of face here in being confronted in a very public way with the allegation, possibly before they had had uh, enough time uh, internally to absorb it and figure out what they were going to say about it after the Prime Minister raised it with Prime Minister Modi at the, at the uh, G20 meeting uh, earlier. Now, the impl implications here, even though Canada is trying to turn down the temperature, really will likely be on trade, um, that India was the central piece uh, or one of the central pieces of the Indo-Pacific strategy that Canada had unveiled. So where do you see this going from here and how will this affect trade going forward? Well, it's pretty hard to have an Indo-Pacific strategy without Indo. So it's, 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 as I said at the outset, it's not good. It's not, it's not good. Uh, I don't think that you can sort of put it in the same uh, kind of moral equivalency. If, 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 if indeed, you know, agents of the government of India did in fact commit an assassination of a Canadian citizen on Canadian soil, that really uh, goes outside all of the, the uh, norms of international behavior. However, uh, I think it's, it's, it's of concern to anyone who's trying to promote the Canada-India relationship, whether, uh, whether members of the diaspora or Canadian businesses or Canadian universities, 
that no uh, accusations of a particular person have been made. Mm -hmm. There have been no charges laid. There has been no request for extradition of anyone who committed a crime. So um, one hopes that there is enough here for uh, the police to actually lay a criminal charge and begin the proceedings that then it would be clearly necessary for India to respond to one way or another. If, in fact, that person is an Indian national and is on Indian soil, then we should be asking for their ex extradition. But do you think that Canada had any other choice but to make that move when they did say that there were credible allegations? Well, I think they had to, they had certainly had to raise it at the highest levels with the government of India. I think, you know, if, if you, could, you could argue over whether it merited a statement uh, by the Prime Minister in the House of Commons uh, at that point in time. Um, that's, uh, that's something, you know, the Prime Minister would have to have to answer whether why he believed that that was a necessary step. I, I don't think it should be, though, taken that if he hadn't raised it then, that in any way that represented a condemnation of what uh, purportedly the Indian officials have, uh, have, have permitted to, to happen. All right, Mr. Manley, I appreciate your time today. We're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much. My pleasure, Mike. Thank you.